Hi boys and girls, today we're gonna read another Seymour Simon book called Cats. In this book, Seymour Simon explores the world of cats. Topics covered include their history as domesticated pets, traits that make them agile and efficient hunters, how they communicate, how they raise their young, and different cat breeds. All right, let's, so let's open this up. All cats are hunting animals. They use claws and teeth to seize their prey. When you watch a cat play with a ball or a piece of yarn, it is almost like watching a tiger or a leopard stalking its prey in the wild. Even well-fed pet cats will try to catch mice or birds or insects. Cats are great, are great fun to watch. They make good pets, but they do not act at all like dogs. Dogs are noisy, friendly, and lively. Cats are quiet. They may disappear for hours without without you you they may disappear for hours without your being able to find them. But cats can be also be friendly and will sit on your lap purring contently while you stroke their fur. Learning about cats can help you select your pet cat and take better care of it. Now that we read the first page, let's talk about some predictions you can make about what you will learn about cats from this book. What's some things you think Seymour Simon is going to talk to us about cats? Let's keep reading to find out. More than a hundred years ago, wild cats were domesticated for the first time. About 5,000 years ago, cats were used in Egypt to protect stored grain from mice and other rodents. Early Egyptians considered cats sacred animals. When a cat died, there was a period of mourning. Then the cat was mummified and buried in a casket in a cat cemetery. In one ancient Egyptian cat cemetery, more than 300,000 cat mummies were found. From Egypt, pet cats began to spread across Asia and Europe. In Siam, Thailand today, only the king and royal family owned cats. The Siamese cat was the royal cat of Siam. But the Middle Ages, cats had become very popular in France and England. In the 1600s, they, be, they came to the Americas with the colonists. Nowadays, pet cats live with people in countries around the world. And we can see right here that this is one of the Siamese cats. Cats are not very big. Adults usually weigh between six and 15 pounds. Cats have slim and flexible bodies. They can twist their bodies in amazing ways. The bones in a cat's back are much more loosely connected than the bones in your back. This makes a cat's body very bendable. Cats are great climbers and jumpers. They also use their tails for balance. When a cat jumps, its body uncoils like a spring. A cat absorbs the landing shock easily with its front legs and the cushioning pads on its front paws. When a cat falls several feet, it twists its body in midair and lands on all fours, usually without hurting itself. This may be why people sometimes say a cat has nine lives. What's something that's new or surprising that you've learned about cats so far? And we can see a couple different pictures of cats here. We have one cat jumping. Then we have this cat here that's shown us that it's falling off of something and kind of what it does in midair to land on its feet. Some people think that cats can see in the dark. Cats have excellent vision, but even they can't see in, in total darkness. They can see in light that is only one sixth as bright as the light humans need for seeing. Cats have a special mirror-like surface in the back of their eye called the tapetum. Faint lines passes through the eye and then it's reflected by the tapetum, tapetum back, back out of the eye. The reflected light is what makes cats gleam in the dark and helps them see better at night. Cats can see in color, but it doesn't mean much to an animal that hunts at night. Color plays no part in hunting a mouse in dim light or in deciding to nuzzle against your red shirt rather than your blue one. Cats also have a good sense of hearing. 
They can hear sounds that are too soft or too high pitched for humans to hear. A cat turns its ears very quickly to locate the direction of a sound. Hearing helps cats hunt for mice and other little animals when they move about. So we can see the cat's eyes right here, and then we can see the cat's ears right here. A cat's whiskers are very sensitive to touch. Cats have whiskers on the chin, over the eyes, and on the backs of their front legs. Not just on the upper lip, in the dark, whiskers help a cat sense objects that it cannot see. But it is not true that a cat's facial whiskers are exactly equal to the width of a cat's body. Smell is another important sense in cats. Cats often will not eat food that has been turned stale because of its bad odor or smell. Cats have, been, ha cats have about 19 million smelling nerve endings in their noses. Humans have only about 5 million. Cats love the smell of a plant called catnip. They sometimes roll around in catnip, making happy sounds. Cats are fussy eaters. Dogs will eat almost anything you give them off the table, but cats are much pickier and don't have a sweet tooth and won't eat cookies or candy bars that, the way that dogs will. So we can see the cat in the picture here. And I want you to think about how cat senses help them. How are cat senses like the senses of dogs or other animals? If you have a pet cat, you may have tried to train it to not to scratch the furniture. You may even have tried to teach your cat not to bring a dead mouse into the house. But a cat doesn't seem to learn these simple household rules. Does that mean that a cat is stupid or has poor memory? Neither is true. Cats learn and remember those things that are useful to them, but not necessarily useful to you. It quickly remembers the location of the food and water dishes and the litter box. A cat can even sometimes remember its own name at mealtimes when it's called. Cats remember things in their own in their neighborhoods that they they want to avoid, like a pesky dog. They may even remember where they live if taken away from home, but only with a skillful training Will a cat remember what you want it to remember? Cats can't talk using words in the way people do, but cats make sounds that tell you or other cats how they're feeling or what they want. Cats purr, gargle, meow, wail, hiss, screech, and growl. Each of these sounds means something different. Purring usually means everything is fine. Kittens purr to their mothers and mothers purr to their kittens. Adult cats purr to each other when they are peaceful. Cats purr when you pet them. Gurgling is another happy sound cats make. Sometimes a cat will gurgle and meow for minutes in a kind of cat chat with another cat. A kitten meows if it's cold or lost or wants to be fed. Adult cats meow if they are hungry or, not, or unhappy about something. Hissing, screeching, and growling are angry sounds. The awful screech a tomcat makes at night is a cry of warning to other tomcats in the area to keep away from a female cat. Cats also use body language to show what they are feeling. When a cat rubs itself against your legs or against another cat, it is happy and affectionate. If a cat points its ears forward, it signals friendly interest and watchfulness. An angry cat raises its ears and points them backward, narrows its eyes to slits, and pushes its whiskers forward. A cat that is hunting or playing open, its eyes wide open, perks up its ears and bristles its whiskers. When a cat is petted and happy, it partly closes its eyes and relaxes its body and whiskers. When a cat arches its back, flattens its ears, and shows its teeth, the cat is afraid and defensive. If a cat is frightened, its hair stands up all over its tail, goes down. If it's about to pounce or attack, its hair stands up along the spine and tail. The tail whips from side to side or suddenly stands up. There are many different ways that cat talks. Watch your cat carefully and you'll soon be able to figure out what each sound and body movement, movement mean. By the time they're a year old, female cats can have babies. After mating with a male cat, a mother cat will give birth to a litter of kittens in about 65 days. A litter can contain as many as a dozen kittens. 
The average litter is four kittens. They use the word dozen. How much is a dozen? If you said 12, you're right. Kittens are usually born from five minutes to two hours apart. A kitten is born in a cloudy white sack filled with fluid. The mother licks each newborn kitten, breaks the sack, and removes the fluid from its face. Licking makes the kitten start to breathe. The mother also bites through the umbiculus, the, the cord that carries food to the fetus and took away its, its waste while it was inside the mother. Even a first time mother cat seems to know exactly what to do. Right away, the newborn kittens suckle milk from their mother. She purrs and nuzzles them as they feed. So you can see in this picture here, we have a mother cat, right? And we see her little kittens feeding off of her. And you can see the little baby kitten right there. And she's licking it to clean it. A newborn kitten is mostly helpless. Its eyelids are closed, its ears are laid back. The tiny kitten can't see or hear. It weighs only two to five ounces. It's only about as long as a pencil. At birth, a kitten can wiggle and squirm, but it cannot walk. Newborns snuggle together for the first week or so. The mother licks her kittens often. She carries them gently but firmly by the scruff of their neck. The mother and the baby soon learn to recognize one another by smell. About eight days after birth, a kitten begins to open its eyes. In less than three weeks, it can see and hear. A one month old kitten runs around and plays. It can weigh between nine ounces and 18 ounces, which is just over one pound. By the end of its second month, a kitten eats solid food and has stopped nursing. A four month old kitten is completely independent of its mother. What is interesting about female cats and how their kittens are born and grow? How does this remind you of a mother's mother dogs and their puppies? Over the last century, people have developed more than 100 different varieties of cats called breeds. A cat can be a purebred or a mixed breed cat. Pure, purebred cats are usually divided into two groups, long haired cats and short haired cats. The most popular breed of long haired cats is called a Persian or simply long hair. A Persian's fur is soft and may grow as long as five inches. It has a sturdy body, a round face, a short nose, and round eyes, and short legs. A Persian's fur can be black, white, red, blue, smoky, tortoiseshell, calico, pewter, chocolate, or other combinations. Persians are usually quiet, even-tempered temp even cats. That makes them ideal for pets who keep their cats indoors. Other long-haired cats, such as the Angora, or the Balinese cat have slimmer bodies and are more active than Persians. They are gentle, friendly, and playful. So here we have a long haired cat. A feral cat is a house cat that has gone back to being wild. For a feral cat living in a city or a big cat in the wild, having short hair can be an advantage. That's because long hair can get tangled in things when a cat is stalking its prey. Long hair also gives a cat's enemy something to grab onto. Short-haired cats are far more common in nature than long-haired ones. There are many kinds of purebred short-haired cats, including British short-hairs, American short-hairs, Siamese, Mannixes, and Abyssians. The Siamese is a slender cat with blue eyes and a really loud meow. The Manx is a tailless breed. The Abyssinian looks like the cat that the ancient Egyptians worshipped. Whether your cat is a purebred, long-haired, or a short-haired cat, or a mixed-breed cat, it can make a good family pet. After we've talked about all these different kinds of cats, which cat would you want? A long-haired or a short-haired cat? And why? Here are some questions you and your family may want to think about before you decide to get a pet cat. 
Do you have enough room for a cat's food dish, water dish, and litter box? Will your cat have to be indoors all the time or can it be allowed outdoors? Remember, all kinds of cats prey on birds. Consider putting a collar with a bell on your pet cat if you allow it to go outdoors. Will you or other family members have the time and patience to care for a cat regularly? Can your family make arrangements to take care of the cat if you go away or many days on a trip? You also have to think about what kind of cat you want. Should you get a purebred or a mixed breed cat? If you'd like a purebred cat, what kind do you want? Do you want a male or female cat? Do you want a kitten or an adult? Should you adopt a cat from an animal shelter or from a friend or buy one from a cat breeder? You and your family need to find out as much as you can about having a pet cat before making these decisions. For many people, cats make ideal pets. Watching a cat is never dull. A cat loves to explore. It will play with a string or stalk its object. It will climb almost anything and get into the most unlikely places. It can be quiet or friendly with its owner. Cats are wonderful and mysterious animals. Just ask anyone who's ever owned a cat. All right, so this book has a glossary and index like the other Seymour Simon books we have read. What could you use a glossary or an index for? If you said you could use a glossary to look at words you, know, words you don't know, you're correct. You can see here that there's many words listed here that give us the definition. And for the index, if you wanted to find a certain kind of cat, you could use the index to do that. For example, if I wanted to find out about long-haired cats, I'd go to page 27 and 28. And again, at the back of uh, Seymour Simon's books, we have a lot more nonfiction books. And I hope you enjoyed reading this book today with me.